We're going to look at installing a standard single server um, for TFS. So the first thing I'm going to do is install SQL Server. There we go. This will run the SQL Server install. Have to apply Server Pack 1 afterwards in order to install TFS 2013. Now we're going to select a new SQL Server standalone and we'll add the features to it. Now we're doing a single server, everything on the one box. Um, I am joined to a domain um, so we can get all the, the goodness of credentials. So I now have a, a warning for the firewall, which I'm not worried about because it's going to be all in one box. Um, and it's completed um, all the kind of prerequisite tasks that, it's, uh, that SQL Server needs. So we're going to do a SQL Server feature installation. Um, we don't really need the other uh, features at the moment and we're, we're going to configure some of the things. So in order to do a, a kind of full standard TFS install, we need the database engine services and include the full text uh, for search. Uh, we need that for TFS. We're also going to install analysis services and reporting services. Now, what I usually do when I'm installing uh, SQL Server, I'll also install the management tools, but I'll, which allow us access uh, uh, to configure and operate SQL Server. And um, we don't really need to be able to do much because um, TFS is going to manage this for us. Um, but that should give us um, all of the capabilities that we need. So I'm just going to take the default instance name um, that tends to be um, preferable, especially if you're just doing a single server install. As for service accounts, um, you want to try and leave it as the default if you can. And um, these service accounts are all pre-configured in Windows to operate as you as you would expect and um, in a single server instance where we don't need communication with sql server from outside of the server uh, this is the best option and to be honest even on uh, multi-server deployments this is the best option as well as long as your network will support it and it depends the version of active directory i'm running a uh, 2012 r2 active directory so i shouldn't have any problems now uh, by default, there are no users specifically added um, to connect to TFS. So I'm going to add the current user, uh, which is myself. And I'm also going to add uh, the service account under which uh, TFS is going to run. So that is TFS service, I'm fairly sure. There we go, TFS service. I'm going to make sure that has access. Um, I'm going to leave the data directories uh, and the file stream as is. You may want to put the data directories on a separate drive. Uh, we're going to have backup set up later, um, so that shouldn't be an issue. Analysis services. Um, we are going to install in multi-dimensional and data mining mode. Uh, this is the only mode that's supported currently by TFS. Uh, Jeff Levinson has a, um, a module for uh, enabling a tabular mode, uh, but you need a separate analysis server that plugs into the existing data warehouse in order to achieve that. So again, I'm going to add the current user and add a TFS service. There we go. And for reporting services, we're going to install and configure. And we require the configuration so that there's a database there waiting for us. If we do install only, we'd have to configure reporting services manually afterward. Cut there. We're going to use uh, install and configure. And um, if we don't do uh, uh, configure, we have to configure it manually afterwards. Uh, and this just take a little bit of time to create the database. Uh, this will do it for us. 
So, you can check uh, that you have everything ready to install, and make sure that you have the correct account set up, and then just click install. There we go, we have um, SQL Server installed with the management tools, database engine, analysis services, and reporting services. So now all we need to do is make sure that we have Service Pack 1 applied. So let me copy Service Pack 1 onto this machine. Service Pack 1 is about a gig. Um, so it may take a moment to run. And I think kill that. There we go, run the service back. Here we go, we start the update. Fantastic. Now we have a uh, SQL Server Service Pack 1 all installed and configured. So let me close that. Now we need to install Team Foundation Server. So let me open my Team Foundation Server disk. 
Now we should be able to just install a straightforward Team Foundation server and then when the wizard comes up after the install is complete we're going to pick uh, the standard single server option. There we go. The installation of TFS is complete. We still have to configure it. It's not really installed yet. It's just the files are there. Um, and we're just going to pick a trial license just now. You'll get your actual license off MSDN. Awesome. We can now run a standard uh, single server install. Now we want to use the, the default instance of uh, uh, um, SQL Server. And if this wasn't a uh, Server 2012 R2, which doesn't support SharePoint 2013, um, then it would install SharePoint 2013 for us, just the default SharePoint Foundation. Um, that will be supported from Service Pack 1 of SharePoint 2013, but it's just not there yet. Now, if you want to use remote uh, uh, database servers, remote uh, SharePoint or reporting services, then you would want to use an advanced installation. But at the moment, we're just going to take the kind of um, vanilla version of TFS out of the box, standard single server. If I start the wizard, so you have a couple of things that I need to configure. Um, let me click next. There we go. So I need a service account. And we can use the test button to check whether we've entered the username and password correctly, which we have. And then it's going to run a bunch of system checks on whether it can install uh, its SharePoint on this machine. which it should come back, and this is correct. It will say uh, we have two issues. 
One is we need a minimum of 8 gig memory in order to install SharePoint Foundation, which I've not got this machine set to 8 gig memory. Um, the other one is that um, SharePoint Foundation is not supported in the operating system we're using. And we just need to check this and say, yes, we are happy to continue without installing um, SharePoint Foundation. So you can review the configuration it's going to have. We're going to run the readiness checks. So it's going to make sure that the accounts that we've picked um, are going to uh, be able to communicate properly, that we can set up the server, that we can configure all the PCs. So it's talking to reporting services. That's why it's taking so long at this point, spinning up reporting services, the data tier, um, application analysis services, all of those things are going to be checked. Awesome. So now that everything's uh, verified here, we click the configure button. Okay, now that uh, TFS is installed, successfully configured, uh, we can finish up. Now, if I just go to the URL for TFS, it's a quick test to make sure everything's working. We'll see that at the moment we get a, a, a pop-up box. This is actually a security thing because we're on the server. Um, but if I go to and put in password and we will get uh, TFS up and running so let me close that and you see we've completed the configuration and uh, we could go on and configure the build server or any of the other uh, PCs but I'm just going to close this just now and you'll see there we go we get this uh, um, Internet Explorer security thing and then we get JavaScript is disabled and all this kind of uh, malarkey so let me quickly fix that if you want to fix this, open up your server manager, go to local server, i.e. enhanced security is on, turn it off, because we actually want to be able to use this computer. And now we go to, and we'll get our, connected into our TFS server. And that's everything up and running. We've installed TFS. If I open up the admin tool, you'll see that we have the TFS RTM, um, and we indeed have one collection with no team projects currently. No, no team projects. We don't have uh, SharePoint configured, but we do have uh, reporting services configured, analysis services, and um, all of those things. And that will be uh, building the warehouse uh, behind the scenes. That will take a little while, uh, usually two to three hours to, to get that all configured. And this is a completely blank server, so it's probably uh, done already. Um, but it will work away in the background, and that's your TFS server configured. If I want to create a team project, which is the main test of TFS working, um, it hits pretty much all the components of TFS. So if I open up uh, Visual Studio, I go to Team Explorer. If I connect into my TFS server, and click Create Team Project. Now that's going to be a little bit out of the bounds of the display. But let's call it my first team project. And we will pick the default Visual Studio Scrum 2013, which is the only you know proper process template. Uh, we're going to pick Git as the version control system. And we're going to click finish. Perfect. Now we have my first team project. And we can go back over in our server. And if I refresh this, you'll see we have a my first team project in here. And if I open up the browser again, oh, I did that again. And we browse. 
my first team project and we can navigate into that team project and that's us done we have tfs installed we've created our first team project and everything's configured